here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And in today's video, I'm going to make a key ring hanger. Now the thing is, yes, I always lose my keys. So I thought if I made a big thing to hang off my keys, then at least I can locate that big thing in my bag. And so I came up with this, what looks like a little bit like a dream catcher with a flower in the middle and then three tassels, of course, tassels. Um, and yeah, it's working. I put it on my keys and I had it in my bag and I saw the tassel sticking out. So I pulled on the tassel and I had my keys. So ideal. Now, of course, yes, it looks a little bit like a dream catcher. So you could use it for that as well. It's a little lovely design. It's a really lovely little circle with the flower in the middle. So today I am going to make one in a different colorway. So I made this one as a trial. And of course, I tried it out with my keys. Worked very, very well. And I am going to make another one because, yeah, you know, you can never have enough. Certainly if you have different sets of keys. Also, it doesn't weigh much, so if you need it for your car keys, it's ideal because it doesn't weigh them down. So what did I use? So first of all, I am using the King Cole Cotton Soft. It's a DK weight, 100% cotton, and they have it in lovely colors. This one is lavender. I have here sage. This one is orchid and this one is fudge. And we have it on our website, so do go and have a look at it there. Then, of course, you need the usual suspects of your scissors, darning needle, some stitch markers as well. And I have used some beads. You don't have to use the beads. You can do without basically you just attach it without and i also have a wooden ring just to put on the top because you need a way to attach your keys so i've got the wooden ring and then i have this carabiner which i will use to put onto the ring but then also put my keys on there and that way um, they are attached but you can also take it off in case you need to okay so i am using most importantly my usual hook of a three and a half because it's dk weight yarn for the tassels my fabric scissors because it's easier to cut lots of yarn with and of course i have chocolate <laughs> <laughs> I use this to wind the yarn around for my tassels. Look at that. So I have already made the tassels. I will show you in a B-roll how to make these. But yeah, you know I love my tassels. So there we go. So I think I've told you everything that you need. So let's get on and start making the keyring. To get started, I'm taking the lavender and I make a slip knot, insert my hook, and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then you go back to your first chain, insert, and you bring through the yarn and Pull it through the loop on your hook, making a slip stitch. Then you are going to chain one and you're going to do eight single crochets into the circle. So do your eight single crochets. So that's the first one. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. So really, that's seven single crochets done. We need eight Vs on the outside of our work. So at the moment, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we were to do an eighth one, 
then the slip stitch will give us another one. So we're not going to do that. We are going to go under the first one and we do the slip stitch and that will then serve as our eighth one. And that is the end of this colour. So I'm going to cut it off, pull through the yarn. So there we go. So now we're going to make the flower petals. So I've got my orchid and I am going to do my slip knot. I'm going to get started with a standing stitch. So insert your hook. And now we're going to do double crochets. Not only that, we're going to do four double crochets together. So you yarn over, insert under any V and you're going to do, make sure you keep this tight, you're going to do a double crochet, but you only do the first pull through. Then you yarn over again into the same stitch and you pull through the first two loops. Again, same thing. And you do this four times. And now you have five loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over, pull through the five loops, and then you chain two. One, two. Then we go under the next V. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Stop, start the new one. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, pull through two, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and again, and then you've got five loops, pull through all the five loops, one, two chains. And so we're going to do that all around our little circle here. There we go. Because we've got eight Vs, you will be doing eight petals. Five loops, yarn over and pull through all the five loops. So chain two and we start again. So I will meet you at the end when you have done all your petals. I have done my eight petals, just doing my last two chains and then here, just making sure that you go over to your first petal that you did. This is that standing stitch that tends to sort of close up for me. I'm going to go into the next V there and I'm going to do a slip stitch just so it's finished nicely. Okay, so that is the flower done for our little circle here. And now we will go over to Sage and we are going to do half double crochets this time. So make your slip knot and insert your hook. So this time you're going to go into the chain spaces that we made in the previous round. And we are just going to be placing four half double crochets in each chain two space. So yarn over into the chain space and we do a half double crochet. And yeah, that first one, there we go, is always a little bit awkward. There we go, four. And then on to the next one. I mean, this is a really, really easy pattern. It's so effective. I love it. It's so lovely. And you know how I like to do a flower and then, you know, green leaves around it. This is just perfect. <laughs> OK, so there we go. So we're going to go round all the way, placing four half double crochets into each chain two space. I have done four, haven't I? Yes, one more here. I will see you at the end of the round. 
made it to the end of the round once again i'm going over to that first lot here that we did this one is closed up i'm going to go into that v there and i'll just do my slip stitch there there we go so that's the end of the sage round there we go so now we're going to go on to the neutral color and we are going to finish off the circle. So make a slip knot, insert your hook. And this round we're going to be doing single crochets. But we are now in the fourth row, one, two, three, so the fourth row. And because it's a flat circle, you have to do increases. So for this round of single crochets, we are going to be increasing the increase for the fourth round. So let me show you. Insert under any V and do your single crochet. So that's one, two, three and four goes in with number three so we're doing one single crochet on its own in the first stitch one single crochet on its own in the next stitch two single crochets in the next stitch so one in the first stitch one in the next stitch and two in the third stitch there we go and i will meet you at the end of the round Now I'm nearly at the end of the round. It doesn't work out to do one, one, two, because obviously this might not be the true amount that you have for your third round, but my circle is lying flat. So that is perfectly fine. So I'm just going to do one, one and call it good basically. So I'm going to go over this one into here and do a slip stitch. You know, sometimes you're switching around the pattern and things are different so there you go that's how it goes so now we are going to do a second round of single crochets and we're just going to add another lot of ones in between our repeat so chain one then you do your first one in the first stitch you do one in the next stitch you do another one in the next stitch and then you do two in that next stitch so this is the repeat for one two three four five for row five and basically one two three four five we are doing row five so that's the easiest way to you know remember what to do or to know what to do just see which row you are doing so that's the three and now we have two in the same stitch okay I will see you at the end of the round. So just at the end of this round here, this is the location where I have to do two. And then we've just got the one stitch left. That's fine. I'll just do one stitch here, skip under the V and close the round. And we're still lying perfectly flat and that's fine to do. OK, so now, of course, this is my second one. So you will have to make your first one. OK, then you cut off your yarn and then you make a second one. But here I don't cut it off because, of course, we're going to have to crochet them together. So that is what I am going to do now. So for this one here, I didn't um, sew in any of my ends and they're just in there and it makes it a little bit thicker, as you can see. And here I was very vigilant and I did sew them in and I shouldn't have done because now I'm going to have less bulk. <laughs> but what you also could do is make a little flat circle in the base colour, so in that fudge, and put that in so that you can just incorporate that and use that to make your little pad a little bit thicker. But I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to put my ends in like that. But before we're going to crochet them together, we're just going to have a look and see if we can find the middle. So I've got these four 
half double crochet is here and then about there I'm going to say that that's the middle I mean you could start counting here but you know me and counting <laughs> and then you go down and you do the same thing here let's find a stitch marker to use so we've got the middle just about here right let's see don't you think that's okay yeah and then so this is going to be for hanging this is going to be for the middle tassel and then here we're going to have to decide where we're going to be putting the first tassel so um, how many stitches apart did I do it here? One, two, three. Yeah, I think so. So one, two, three. And then the fourth one here. I'm going to put a stitch marker. And then one, two, three. And the fourth one there. Oh, if only I could pick these things up easier. Three, yeah, here. That's where we're going to put a stitch marker as well. So now that we have those locations marked, we can put this back together again. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to put this, so I've got the top stitch marker, the top loop, just past where I'm starting. So I'm going to get started here and then do this as last. We are going to be picking up the inner loops. So if you look at your V, you see there's two strands so this one here you're going to pick up and then on the other side you are also going to look at the V and you're going to pick up the inner one there and then you do your single crochet same thing here and this way it will give it a nice little ridge see look all along our circle here so this is how you will continue all along your circle until you meet the stitch marker and I will be back when I do so I've made it to the stitch with the stitch marker and I'm going to remove it because obviously I know it's the next stitch. And so I'm going to do a single crochet in the inner loops. Then I'm going to do five chains. One, two, three, four and five. And then I go back into the same location of those inner loops and I do a slip stitch. There we go. And that has made a lovely little loop so I can later on attach my tassels from there. Now I do single crochets again into the inner loops until I meet the next stitch marker and basically you do the same thing. There we go. So it's in the next stitch, so I'm going to remove the stitch marker, do a single crochet in the inner loops, then one, two, three, four, five, back into those same inner loops for a slip stitch. And you repeat it for this stitch marker as well and then you go all the way around i will meet you at the stitch marker at the top so i'm now at the stitch marker at the top and i've left this stitch free because this is where we're going to get started to attach the wooden ring so i'm going to insert as usual pull up my loop but then to go and get this loop I'm going to put my ring in between go into the ring put the yarn around the ring and then pull that through so make sure this little loop is big enough then I'm going to do the next stitch so 
pick up the inner loop yeah bring in your yarn pull up a loop and then again around the ring and finish your single crochet there we go and let's remove this one here because it'll get in the way then our third stitch in there and the next one that i need to use now i am also checking to make sure that there's the same stitches left over and i think there's one more here so i have just in here i think skipped one or not oh no no i didn't and i don't have to because there's the same amount left okay <laughs> i was all ready to uh <laughs> to fudge there there we go voila see so i've done my single crochets but i've incorporated my ring and then you are going to just start doing your single crochets in a loop again without going round the wooden ring just to finish off the round and then here i've got this left i've got this but i'm just going to go under this v here and i do a slip stitch there we go just to close the round and that will look good so there we go so make sure that this is loose enough so it hangs nicely but i think it's okay like this look at that right okay so cut this off what i did i think in that previous one was just put this on my needle go through it like this to make an invisible weaving and then just bring your yarn to in between the two panels here and weave it in basically there we go so that's done that looks nice and then i just <laughs> push this back in through the hole so it disappears there we go look at that <laughs> okay so now we can attach our tassels and as you can see i've made two in one color and then one in the other so of course this one is going to go in the middle so let's put that on first and yeah either with your hook or with your needle here with your darning needle see this eye is really big so i can get things in there i go around there there we go and i'm just going to make a nice knot here voila tie it on so put your end on a needle and push it through so this is a bit of a thinner needle it will take it through the bead again and you'll just have to do that with all your ends and then I'm going to attach my carabiner here and so I am ready to put this on whatever I need to put it on but also it would be lovely to hang you know in a bedroom in a children's bedroom or wherever you might want to use it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video Bye!